Hi, and welcome to another episode of Inspiring Business. My name is Mark Bullock, and I'm the co-founder of phoneblogger.net, videosocials.net, and video interview podcast services, where we facilitate marketing services and systems for professional service firms, including attorneys, financial professionals, coaches, and consultants. Every episode, I interview business thought leaders who make a difference in the world through their services, their products, or their ideas. You can find the show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and more. Today, I'm excited because my guest is my friend and longtime client, Lisa Levy, who is the founder and CEO of L-Cubed Consulting, where she helps leaders thrive through adaptive transformation. She's also an engaging speaker, a best-selling author, and she has her own video podcast. Hi, Lisa. Great to have you. Hey, Mark. It's such a great pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. You're, cer you're certainly welcome. Well, I know we're, we're recording this just after the 4th of July holiday weekend. I know that you're just coming back from vacation, and, and we're both kind of getting back on our feet again after a, a little bit of time off. Um, but uh, one of the things that I wanted to, to talk about this morning, uh, you've been a member of Video Socials for, for some time now, so I'm very familiar. I've seen you record many videos that, that you've got out there. You've got a wonderful presence uh, online, and we'll have, of course, links to all of that available with however somebody is consuming this particular podcast. Um, but, you know, your L Cube Consulting, the title of your business, what you do, the adaptive transformation, et cetera, is all kind of unique and, and interesting. Um, but you call yourself a consultancy, and a consultancy, and consultancies have changed. And so, why did you decide that consulting needed to change? So the decision happened by accident, as so many things. I think the best things often do in business. I was working for a an upstart emerging company. They were getting ready to, to skyrocket and do really amazing things. And I looked around at the number of consultants that were running around the building. Mm. Each C-level executive had a consulting team supporting them. Mm. And each of those consulting teams were focused on growing their presence inside that company. And I was horrified and absolutely almost physically nauseated as I was doing math in my head. And I kept hearing cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. And it had nothing to do with the company I was working for or the betterment of that company, but those consultancies landing and expanding and driving their bottom line. Mm. And I just sort of had it. It was like, that was absolutely absurd. And I wanted to do something different. Terrific. So then how can you compare uh, traditional consultancies uh, were run then versus what you're, how you're running L cubed? So with L cubed, I was really focused on doing that, you know, that something that's different, that's something that's better um, over time, that's something that's disruptive. Mm -hmm. And what I came up with was there are best practices that large corporations use across, um, across the world. And with those practices, they get efficiency and effectiveness gains for their business. And I decided that if I took those things and they're familiar ideas, right? Project management, process management, organizational change, internal controls. Sometimes we can talk about that as risk management, but if we take those things together and leverage them holistically, horizontally across a business, rather than building silos for each of those, we can tune the operating model of a business very, very quickly, very, very effectively. And with the consultancy in L cubed, we teach skills and capabilities in all of those areas so that the teams that we work with are empowered to continue doing for themselves what we came in and taught them. So we get in, we solve a problem, and we leave. The key is we leave. Right. Um, not saying that we don't do multiple engagements with the same company, but the idea is that we're solving different problems, teaching new and different skills and capabilities with each engagement. 
so that we're building up their self-reliance and that they are not reliant on the consultancy. So it, it's actually quite fascinating to me because uh, in a previous life, <laughs> I was uh, doing um, technical consulting uh, for a, um, um, and the pinnacle of that career was uh, was working with um, the United Nations and and uh, on uh, their their global technical architecture, et cetera. So, little little, little bit of a technical background on on my end in, in, in the IT industry, um, and even within that, there was like silos mm -hmm. of consultants, and you could and you could just see. Um, you know, and there's, there's the financial aspects, you know, the uh, any large organization has got a whole, you know, again, as you've already indicated, a lot of different stakeholders, but they all have their own kind of thing that they're dealing with and that their interest is, and it may or may not have any real alignment with the overall business practices. And so, I headed a consult. I headed a consulting team, you know, that was working on one area, but even within the whole ID department, they had two or three other consulting teams that were working on other initiatives in other areas, and we're not even talking about business practices here, or 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 even you know the the organizational side of things. These were just multiple silos of multiple teams within um, the IT industry both in their infrastructure, their data storage, their, you know, the processing, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And it was astonishing to me how little the teams actually work together. It was like everybody had their own thing. And it's like, are these people going to be here forever? You know, and, and uh, in my case, there was some contractual issues and I, I ended up I ended up out of that out of that picture, but one of the things one of the main things that they were trying to accomplish um, ended up being a a, a a holistic change to what their their primary system, and being in a different silo, it's like I wanted to help them see what they weren't seeing, which was, you know, it was going to be X number of millions of dollars to do you know in their minds this 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 uh, this new project. Mm -hmm. And from my perspective, I was like, that's not even going to scratch the surface because yeah. because I was in the infrastructure, I knew I had a general understanding of the whole picture. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you're you're going to have you're going to have this this consulting firm move in with you for the next 10 or 15 years. Yes. To do this. OK. And that horrifies me. Yeah. And 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 so to to see that and you know and later on I found out that's exactly what happened and it, and it and it wasn't you know it wasn't a few times over budget it was literally twenty times over budget mm -hmm. before it was all said and done and they never got to where they what their original yeah. objectives were so um, I get even from a you know just. And, and there was good people, great people in, in, in IT that were trying to do the right, you know, trying to do the right thing. And, and it was, it was, it, it wasn't, it wasn't just egos, you know, cause it's a mm -hmm. sense of what, of, of, of what you were saying before was, and I'm sorry, I've kind of like taken over the conversation, but this really, this really just highlighted something, something for me. And so it's like, everybody had best intentions mm -hmm. and, the way that they were running things though meant and keeping things siloed and not you know and not cro and not uh, uh, creating a holistic view and, 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 and you know and, and looking at it from that vertical versus those horizontal planes um yeah. they were literally setting themselves up to be dependent on siloed consultancies that were operating yeah. independently that were actually fighting each other over not intentionally, but their goals were were not in alignment, so they were fighting each other. So absolutely. So when you you look at that from the corporation perspective, and yeah, you know, we're talking about you know your example, United Nations. We're talking big, um, right? But these op organizations operate strategically, 
operationally and tactically. Mm -hmm. And the challenge is, as you go down and through the organization, is there really understanding and that alignment back to what is the strategic goal, right? What are we really trying to do? What is our part in it? And then how do people do work? And if we keep talking in those silos, right, everybody does have the best of intentions. I, I, I want to work from that mindset, right? There are always those players out there. There's a one or two, but we don't, I don't care about them. The, generally speaking, right, great intentions. But if you don't understand what's happening to your left or to your right, upstream, downstream, you don't know what the real implications are of the work that you're doing, the money that you're spending, um, the, the resources that you're utilizing. And so it is really important from my perspective that one, we always think cross-functionally and we break those silos, but also that as we start building and aligning those three levels of the organization, strategic operations and tactics, that we're tied to strategic goals and that strategic goals are tied to customer outcomes, right? What is it that's actually valuable to the customer or client of the organization? Um, the United Nations has leveraged and has the ability and the funding to leverage big consultancies to do big things. And that's awesome. When they go over budget, you know, 10 times tenfold, right? That's really ugly and nobody wants to do that. But if we start pairing this down to smaller businesses, right, mm -hmm. they don't have the money to do that. Right. They don't have the money to go over budget by a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, let alone 10 times whatever the original budget was. Right. And so the adaptive transformation framework starts to take all of these really painful lessons that we've learned in those large enterprises and apply tactics and operational realities that drive smaller and medium sized businesses forward without having to learn those lessons the hard way. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And, and, and I can see even, you know, we have a very small business in comparison to, 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 to what I was consulting for. Um, but if the left, left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing or somebody's moving forward on um, uh, for whatever size the, the organization is, if it's a big deal for that organization or, or it, it is a change of direction or it's, a, it's a, even a refinement mm -hmm. and it's not communicated across, and it's not looked at from a standpoint of, I've often used the phrase uh, with, with my business partner, Vikram Rajan, you know, um, we never know where the domino is, dominoes are going to fall unless we hash out. Okay, so yes, it seems like, oh, this is a simple change or this is a simple thing that we need to do. But the, where, what else is it going to impact? And more importantly, who else is it going to impact? And how does it change? How does it change the existing systems and, and processes? Yeah. Um, I, I guess I guess that that leads me to what was going to be my basically my final question for you, which is, you know, where are modern modern consultancies missing the mark, and and how is LQ different? And I and I think we're we're kind of circling that wagon now, uh, but how would you? We are, and I think that there's you know, and and I love making the big, bold statement that the big consultancies are doing things that I, you know, I consider to be wasteful, that I consider to be in their own self-interest and not the interest of their clients. And those are obnoxious statements that I make because people hear them and they go, hmm. They also have a time and a place and the large enterprise corporations can absolutely work with those tools and with those skills, but they are less than 5% of all of the businesses in the world right? Mm -hmm. The global, those enterprise corporations are less than 5% of the total number of businesses that exist in our global economy. So, right, they really are outliers. For everybody else, we need to be able to solve problems quickly. We need to build teams that know how to do work well. And, right, that's project management, mm -hmm. understanding how to start something do work, get it to an endpoint, transition it to operational reality and move on to the next thing, right? That's simple, basic right. project management. It doesn't matter what function you work in. IT leverages that skill set regularly. 
But finance and accounting needs to be able to do that. HR needs to be able to do that. Sales operations needs to be able to do that. Um, it's not, you know, there's no secret sauce to it. It's a skill. You can learn it. Um, right. Process management, performance management, understanding right. how what I do impacts Mark, what you do, which impacts what Vic does, what impacts what, you know, and how that trickles down. And when Vic makes a change three steps down, what does that do to what I, I was doing before? Right. Understanding how those pieces all fit together inside a team is important, but then the touch points between teams right. is even more important because those are people you may not, depending on the size of the company, actually deal with day in and day out. For you and your team, right, you're all, you know, it is one team. But as you start getting into having a finance team of 20 people and an HR team of 10 people and operations of you know, 50, you don't interact daily with each and every person the way that we do when we're in our smaller companies. So it's important to understand the process and how it works. To support all of that internal controls, risk management, knowing the things you can do and the things you cannot do and what happens when you break those things is really important. Um, financially speaking, right, knowing that I, as a manager, can spend $150, but I can't spend $151. Knowing that I can approve, that you as my boss can approve for me to spend up to $500, but not $501, right? These are important things to know so that we can make the decisions and lead our business the way that we need to. Um, knowing that when I need to spend 1000 who do I go to? to get that approval it's important and, you know financial controls are easy because we all kind of get those but in all processes there are those control points that are our yes no's and and give us that you know the green light red light to do the work that we need to do organizational change is imperative because that's how we take our people on a journey right. that's how we get them to understand and answer because we all live for the what's in it for me if I have a why, I will do anything for the company, for mm -hmm. our customers, for our clients. Yeah. If that why resonates and gives me purpose. And so as we grow, as we change, as disruption occurs, being able to take our employees on this journey with us so that they feel safe, they feel grounded, they feel valued, and they're making a contribution, we help set the stage for us to grow, to adapt, to thrive, to respond to the unexpected, right? Not all change is good, right? Some people fear change because they just, we inherently think we're going to resist it because it's, right, it, it's a bad thing. I like routine. I like knowing everything. Well, change, change is real. We deal with it every day. And the unexpected changes are the ones we have to be best at dealing with because they're the ones that can throw us on our butts and we can sit there and we can go, how did that happen? Or we can dust ourselves off and say, and here's what we're gonna do now. So all of these are skills and capabilities that we can coach, we can teach, we can learn. And the better we're at them as business owners and leaders, the better our teams can be because we're gonna invest in building them up so that they can go with the flow because Right. The rapids are right around the, that, that curve coming up on the water. We don't know what's going to happen next. I'm so good at mixing metaphors. I don't know how many. <laughs> I, I'm the same way. And, and, and there's there's so many things that come to mind. You know, we could literally go on all day with this because, um, you know, just looking at the, the whole concept of having the, the team, having the people fully engaged in not only getting them on board or selling them with your with your latest and greatest newest concept that you came up with but actually engaging them in the process of figuring of figuring that out and then um when things do go awry which of course they do or you see a hole or a gap that, that needs to be filled taking a moment to explain why and what your thinking is rather than just i need you to do this now i need you to do that now in other words to empower rather than delegate rather than just delegate yeah. uh, never mind 
abdication, um, which is, you know, I, I think many of us small business owners that don't have a lot of experience managing employees tend to, to fall into when we're dealing with one crisis after another is we end up abdicating rather than even delegating. But the reality is, is even delegating, if it, if it, come, if it comes with an engagement with the staff so that they understand what the why is and they can make that why their own, mm-hmm. right, um, it's, 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 it's so important. So um, I, I want to take, I, I do have another question for you, but I, I want to take a moment just to say, you know, who we are and what we do. Um, and, and because we work with a lot of people like you, Lisa, and the, and the fact is you're experts in your, in your field and you're trying to make a difference. You're trying, you're trying to disrupt the old ways, not the disruption for the sake of disruption, but dis- disrupt the things that aren't working so that you can interject something that is working. So one of the things that wasn't working 12, 15 years ago when we started Practice Marketing Advisors, which is now Practice Marketing Inc., was that all of our clients were professional services, attorneys, CPAs, financial advisors, consultants, coaches, even real estate professionals. They knew that they needed to get content. They knew that they needed to be out there. We were advising them to do that. We were coaching. We were advising. We were consulting them. Create content. Make it valuable. Make it interesting. Make it something that's a value to 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 your audience. Uh, but they got caught up in the perfectionism of creating that content and the and the technical hurdles of getting it out there. And so we created something called Phone Blogger. And what Phone Blogger did very simply was had a professional editor call, interview the client, five ten minutes. The client answers questions about a specific topic. We record that, we transcribe it, and then the editor would, would convert that into an article. The client's the author. The client is is it's their expertise, it's their voice, etc. And so it's not canned content that's put together. But then we were the logistical facilitators of then getting that through proofing, through QA, you know, headers, et cetera, et cetera, and getting that out to the social media platforms, email, email newsletters, and things like that. So that's phoneblogger.net. So if you have an interest in that, if you're doing the written word uh, and like some help with that, phoneblogger.net is the place to go. Um, then in three and a half years ago, we said, look, video was taking over social media. It is the best way to engage with people. How do we pull this together? I had Toastmasters experience. I had transformational technology experience. I had coaching experience. And, um, and Vic and I came up with a process called, that we call video socials. And that is putting together groups, small groups of people, five to nine or so uh, at a time where we get in a meeting together and we record, we take turns recording videos and giving each other feedback and support and encouragement and engagement to understand how to better create craft our marketing messages on video, how to get confident on camera, how to get our message across. That's videosocials.net. We would love to have uh, have you guys as a guest. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, just click on the guest tab at the top of uh, at the top. And then our next phase was, well, what if we want to have longer form content? What if we want to have, con- rather than a talking head, what if we want to have what we're doing, you and I today, which is having a conversation mm-hmm. and have a little bit more depth and, and, and focus on that? And that turns out, well, that's a lot of logistical work to pull that together. So what we did was we created the VIP services and you're uh, one of, one of our clients in that service. Thank you for being a beta tester for <laughs> with us and, and, and for us or an early adopter really. Um, and so what we do is we handle the, the behind the scenes logistics of getting those guests scheduled, getting, you know, the, what the topics are going to be uh, running the meetings uh, as this meeting is being run by uh, Sarah, one, one of our staff members uh, right now. She's off screen, uh, but I'm not sitting there juggling a bunch of technology while I'm trying to have a conversation with you. Right. So and then on the other side of that is where do these where do these things go? How do they get branded? How do how, uh, et cetera? So and that is um, um, 
going to remember the new website name in in in, in a minute. But essentially, video videosocials.net uh, forward slash VIP service is one way to get to it. So all of that said, Lisa, um, I really had the um, the concept of we've talked about really big business and we've talked about small business. But what is your sweet spot? What size of organization? How would you how would you categorize a business that would be in such a way that you could best serve their size, their industry? How would that work for you? So one of the beautiful things about what we've built with L cubed consulting is our ability to, to, to scale to the needs of a client. And so we do still work with large enterprise entities and we work with emerging small businesses and everything in the middle. Mm -hmm. The key is being at a point in time where a business is maturing at the very least, they're maturing into needing to start to develop functions of HR, of accounting, of operations, um, possibly starting to develop that initial form of a leadership team that will eventually grow into being a C-suite. Um, often we're engaged with a founder who has b brought in a leadership team, is acting as the CEO, and maybe realizing that they have these really great vision of the business, but they've never run a business. And so the business of the business is, is, is stifling and stymieing. And that's where we can come in and start laying down the foundation of adaptive transformation, which becomes a business operating model that they can build and grow. And it will grow and scale with them and take them from you know, 10 million to 50 million to 100 million if we want to you know, continue through that experience. And if they you know, become self-reliant, which is the key, right? They have the ability um, to grow at will. Um, from an industry perspective, we have tremendous experience in healthcare. We have FinTech, we have technology. Um, the business operating model that we're talking about is not specific to an industry. So that's one of the fun things is as we've worked in utility, in e-commerce, in government agencies, in corporations that are, you know, global footprint, American Express type companies, right? It really doesn't matter. It's about the team that's leading it and the desire to be more effective, to be more efficient, and to learn and apply new skills and capabilities across the organization. Got it. Yeah. And how does healthcare fit into all of that? Because I know that you have a personal passion for disrupting. <laughs> I do. So healthcare as an industry is something that we're all reliant on at some point in our lives. Mm -hmm. birth to death. There are points in time where we all need medical care. And I'm frustrated with how difficult it is to get ex exceptional care in the United States where we should all have exceptional care. And so you thank you for giving me the opportunity to do a tease, right? My, my video podcast, Break Everything in Healthcare, are conversations with leaders in that industry who really want to make a difference. And we have conversations like this about how to apply disruption to an industry that is really hard and slow to change, but to explore the idea of, is it as difficult as we make it sound, or are we just stuck in the bureaucratic nightmare that is the industry? So we have lots of fun conversations, picking apart and teasing out an idea to do something different and what it would actually take to make it real. And it may not be as complicated as we were led to believe. Perfect. And so how do people reach you, Lisa? So obviously you have a podcast, the, na the name of it again. Break Everything in Healthcare. Terrific. The easiest way to find me is lisallevy.com. It'll bring you into the L-cubed um, consulting universe. Everything that is there is there. And the L-cubed consulting YouTube channel um, is also readily available. Terrific. And of course, we'll have links uh, below for all of that. Um, and thank you, Lisa, because uh, ever since you joined Video Socials with us, 
I don't know, a year, year and a half ago, some, some, some something yeah. like that. It's like you've 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 had something special, um, and about you, and obviously a a brilliant communicator, um, but really. I get a lot better sense having this conversation with you that you really do go deep. Um, and it's not only the depth, but it's the ability to encapsulate and see all of the silos, all of the intersections, et cetera. And dare I say, a more holistic view of how to help a business kind of get out of their own way uh, and, and, and move forward. So really enjoyed having you today. Um, all of the links that you talked about will be tied in with however you're consuming this content. And again, I'm Mark Bullock, the co-founder of videosocials.net, phoneblogger.net, and video socials um, uh, VIP service. Again, all links will be tied in. And thank you very much. And Mark, we'll see thank you next you. time. You're very welcome.